Listen, I, it was a grim uh, Christopher, Christopher Hipkins who gave that concession speech last night. It was a very, very hard speech to watch. He looked a bit broken, actually. Oh, look, I think obviously this is not a result that anyone, let alone Chris, either hoped for or wanted. I think what we saw from Chris was really the emotion of how much he'd put into the campaign. He gave it his, it's his all over the, the nine months that he was leader. And I think anyone that um, has a, a night last night, like last night, is entitled to a bit of emotion. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is completely natural, I suppose, Megan, but, but particularly given um, the result as leader. It falls on him, doesn't it, uh, this loss? Oh, look, it falls on all of us um, as a team. And what we will be doing as a party, because it's not just our parliamentary team, as a party, as we do after all election campaigns, that we'll go through and we'll do, a re we'll do a review. We need to ask ourselves some questions and we need to look at what went well and what, we, and what didn't go well, because clearly um, there are things that we need um, to address. But I think when it came to it, we were against a very strong mood for change. Um, and that was something that, that came through on the night. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that mood for change um, because what is underneath that is a dissatisfaction with the government, isn't it? Where do you think you lost people or Labour lost people? Yeah, and look, um, I'm far from um, making making um, excuses for us, but I think what we have seen globally for incumbent governments who were there during COVID um, is a really difficult path for them when they do go up for re-election. So I think there's some of that that we'll need to look at. But look, it's it, it's um, kind of... People are finding it tough at the moment, and we acknowledge that, that we came out of a pandemic into a, a cost-of-living crisis um, that the world hadn't seen for quite some time out of um, extraordinary times in a pandemic and, and people are finding it difficult and they want to change and that, and that is something that we felt really strongly um, when we were out there on the campaign trail. Megan, it also looked actually um, a lot like Labour had sort of lost touch, that it wasn't connecting with voters. You must have felt that as the campaign chair as well and that's what's been reflected in the result tonight. Look, I think it's far too early to make those kind of calls. In terms of our connection with voters, um, I don't necessarily think that is the case, but of course we'll look at that. When I think about our direct voter contact, um, we have done more door knocks and phone calls than we have in any other campaign. This has been a grassroots campaign. It has been out there having those individual conversations. Uh, but of course we'll go back and ask those questions, but I just do want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of our volunteers who has been out there putting their heart and soul into this campaign, knocking on the doors and making the phone calls, because this isn't just about the candidates and the MPs, this is about thousands of volunteers and across all political parties actually, that are, elections are, are, are big events and emotional events for them as well. What about, what's your feeling this morning about those safe Labour seats that we saw go to National? Yeah, and look, we need to go through and kind of fully digest all the numbers. I think kind of at first blush, um, I think it's fair to say that, um, that the very difficult times that Auckland has been through um, in the last couple of years, really, are reflected in some of the results that we're seeing on the night. Uh, we'll also want to have a look at what, what impact that had on turnout, because it's not only the votes that were cast, it's the votes that weren't cast, because we know that turnout was down around 4% this election. So there's a lot of of, um, a lot of stuff for us to go and ha have a, uh, a strong look at to fully understand this result. We obviously know the top level of what the result is, but there, there's some understanding that we need to get from digging deeper into those numbers. Yeah, absolutely. And the Māori electorates must be an area that you will be digging into as well, losing oh, look, three of those... It Absolutely, and that's um, something we will be looking at really closely, as we will with all seats and the election um, across the board. We do this after every election, and I think probably all, campaign, all political parties do after every campaign. But certainly, um, we, we've done this before. We need to regroup, um, and we need to pick ourselves up, and we need to get on with the job of um, being the opposition. We need to hold the government to account. It must be um, quite a, a big, you know, flip for you, um, and, and, you know, in your in your point of view or your state of mind, I suppose, Megan, to now be talking about being in the opposition. What is the feeling like amongst um, the caucus and and the party? 
Look, um, I haven't had a chance to talk to, to everyone. I had a, I had a few conversations last night, uh, but that will be happening in the next day or so, getting together with the team. Um, and um, it, it is, but um, I've, I've been in Parliament for 12 years. Six of those have been in opposition and six of them have been in government. Well, thank you so much for joining us here uh, this morning, Megan Woods, uh, that is Campaign Chief for Labour. Thank you.